God's beauty is all around us and my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hello and welcome to Painting Journeys. This is a journey on canvas in oils. I'm going to take you to a new place today, the Italian Riviera. I think you're going to like it there. Um, it was a beautiful, beautiful trip. And I hope to capture just a little bit of the wildness um, that I saw. When you think of Riviera, you think of lots of sandy beaches and stretches and stretches of people laying out in the sun, sunbathing and everything. But it's not quite like that. So please stay with me. My name is Kitty Lynn Klisch, and let's take this journey together. The last two shows that I um, had, I was doing a painting from the, um, from the farming district of San Gimignano, Italy. Uh, in Tuscany, the Tuscany Valley. And I started with a, a painting that was a, um, of an old farm, a 17th century farm. And I wanted to show you a photograph of that again, just to remind you of what it looked like. And then you'll see the completed painting and you'll see the difference between a photograph and an artistic rendering of that photograph. Because if you paint with passion, you, 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 you put what you feel into it. And I think when you see this, you'll, you'll understand what I mean. So this is how it looked when we first started. It wasn't much to look at, really, rather plain. And, um, and as you can see, it has evolved into this beautiful, beautiful uh, painting. Uh, well, and maybe I should, maybe that sounds a little, oh, maybe that sounds a little egotistical, and I don't mean it that way. It's just that I'm excited about that, and I'm excited that you were with me on that trip, on that journey, uh, as we journeyed through this canvas, and, and we, we found what we needed to improve, and we, we uh, added some color and really made it come alive and and that's that's my passion is to take a photograph and bring it to life and to journey across the canvas uh, with color so now today we're going to be doing an area of the uh, Cinque Verde the uh, Italian Riviera that's uh, on the uh, up, upper northern west side of the boot of Italy. And it's very, very wild there, very wild. And, and um, there's, Cinque Verde means five lands or five towns. Um, and so we didn't get to visit all of the towns on our trip, but we did we did take this very harrowing trip. Um, I have a blank, a blank canvas today because I thought, well, maybe you'd like to see me as I start the canvas, as I am ready to, you know, to start laying in. This is, as you can see, it's very wild and, and tumultuous. I was up on a high cliff walking on this trail trying to get to the, um, the, the, the town that we were going to to have lunch. And all the streets in the town were on, you know, hills. I mean, it was literally, you had to walk up steps everywhere you went. Cinque Verde, Verde um, is, um, is known for its pesto sauce and focaccia bread. I'm going to take my uh, my palette. It's just a, a regular a regular palette. Not too many colors today. Doesn't look too too terribly interesting. 
Let us, let's see what we can do. We have a dark shape up here. Take my knife and see here. We're, I'm going to block this in rather dark. And um, so I'm just going to use a little color and complement to make a nice, a nice dark color to block in those shapes. They're mainly very gray, as you can see. Um, it's a nice mid-value with some darks and some lights. Lighten it up just a tad. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to thin my thin the paint a little bit with a little bit of my thinner. I don't paint with a medium. I just paint with a thinner. Okay. So now across up in here, we have a dark spot that's coming like so and it's coming and then there's another one that's coming right in here okay and then this comes back like this okay now i am coming down here and i'm capturing the the look of this coastline now remember we are standing on top looking down almost straight down at this and uh, so it's a little different, a little different view point than what we, what I normally paint. But I thought it was an interesting composition, and I, I liked it for that reason. So now we have these are coming down here. This is I'm right here in this area, right here, okay. And that's coming down there, and then this is coming down. And then it comes up. See this here? Almost like teeth coming up. And then this comes around like this and down and then goes across and here. OK, so now that's, that's all of my mountains, um, the outline of the mountains. Anyway, as I was telling you, you can't get to this place by car or bus. You have to go in by train, and it's in a tunnel. The tunnel, um, when we went, we took the bus to the place where we picked up the tunnel, or the train, rather. And there, since this is the only mode of transportation to get to these five little towns, or villages that are on this mountain, um, mountainous area there with the crags and bluffs and, and, the, and the houses, the villages are built right up to the water, right overlooking these, these um, right up to the bluffs overlooking the, um, the water. I mean, it's really something to see. Anyway, so we got there and our guide was trying to uh, help us all get on the train and there there wasn't enough room and the conductor kept saying squeeze in more squeeze in more well needless to say we were standing and I have to show you what this train looks like I have a photo of it here this is what this is what the train looks like and it's it goes through this long tunnel and we were all packed on there like sardines you wouldn't you wouldn't believe how crowded we were it was so bad i'm claustrophobic and it was so bad that i could hardly breathe you stand there and there's a person pressed against you here 
and somebody pressed against them and our guide couldn't get on the train and she wouldn't leave, let the train leave without us and we're all on the train and there's our guide down below running back and forth on, uh, along the tracks trying to find a place to get on the train and um, anyway so she finally made it and we finally got there well it, it it was horrible. Yeah, I mean, if you've ever seen that movie Schindler's List, then you kind of understand what I'm talking about as far as the being packed like sardines on a train. All of us were very uncomfortable. And I know the native people, people that live there that travel back and forth all the time, they're used to this. And so they were sitting there with their bags of fruits and their breads and things like that and sitting in the seats. and and kind of smiling at us and you could tell that they thought we were quite funny and stupid tourists, you know how that goes. But anyway, so we made it over there. When we got off the train, then we had to walk along this long pathway along the side of the cliffs and it just, it was just like like hewn right out of the side of the cliff. And sometimes you'd be up really high, like I was here when I was looking down. And then other times it would go down lower. And underneath this walkway that went along the cliffs, underneath there were uh, gun portholes that they had put in during World War II. Um, and so you could actually see these portholes and see these horrible conditions that those soldiers must have lived in. And I want to show you a picture of what that looked like. It's very similar to, um, I'll just put this up here. It's very similar to, to what I'm painting here, but it shows you, it shows you the walkway uh, if you can see the walkway going across there, and right underneath are the 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 uh, the places where they had opened up right out of the rocks so that they could uh, defend the coastline from in, the invaders during World War II. It was a fascinating, beautiful place. And anyway, along this walkway between the towns, we came to a part of the walkway that was known as the lovers. Um, it was a section of the, of the uh, walkway that was for lovers. And lovers would go there and they would sit underneath this sculpture that overlooked the ocean. And they would pledge their love to each other and they would kiss. And a kiss underneath this sculpture made meant that your um, your relationship was going to last. A lot of proposals there. It was the walkway of love. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't tell you the name of that in Italian. Uh, my Italian is non-existent. <laughs> so anyway, when we got there and we were walking around and, and um, we went up to this little restaurant, that was one of the first things we did. I had the most marvelous lunch of um, this pasta with the pesto sauce on it. I don't know if you like pesto sauce like I like it, but it's, it's just marvelous. And this was cooked to perfection. Well, it was, you know, it's like, it's like it's all tossed together. It's like it's almost um, uncooked and fresh. Oh my gosh, makes my mouth water just thinking about it. I'm just getting a little bit of the of the feel of the of the cliffs. This is such a rough, wild uh, terrain here, and I, I can't imagine um, its history goes back dates back to the 1100s on paper, but um, it's supposed to be as old as 600 AD, this area. 
So it is really something, and it's always been like this, you know. So then, on the way back, we got to go on a cruise down the Mediterranean all the way, because see, the train had taken us to the furthest town. The five towns are all in a row, and the train had taken us to the furthest and most northern town, and then we got on a cruise boat, and we cruised down, and we looked at all, got to see all of the, of the um, different towns, and to see the color of these, of these uh, buildings, the beautiful corals and, and pinks and yellows and, and blues. I mean, it was just, it was just like being in an enchanted land. It was just so gorgeous. And I didn't, I thought when I first got off the train and I saw what it looked like, I thought, my gosh, how does anybody how would anybody be able, I mean, why would they call this the Italian Riviera? How are you going to, um, how are you going to be able to sunbathe or, um, you know, do the things that tourists like to do? And so I have to show you another picture now. So as we're traveling in the boat down the Mediterranean, just off the coastline, okay, that's what the towns look like. You see what I mean about the color and the beauty of it? I mean, it's gorgeous. And then, just so that you know, there are, there are beaches and there are tons of people out there enjoying the sand and the sun, it was, it was wonderful. It really and truly was. But those colors in those houses, you know, I was kind of, was kind of torn whether to paint a village for you today or to paint the ocean. But the ocean is my true love. I love, I love um, water and the feel of it. And I can hardly wait to get this blocked in so that I can go over and paint in the water. It just, it's wild and strong and, and um, it does something to my soul. It makes me, makes me feel alive. I love it. I love it. I'm really enjoying being here with you today. It's, it's really nice to be able to share my adventures with you. And I'm glad you've joined me. I really am. This, is, this was my trip to Italy was the, a life, the completion of a lifelong dream. And I just I feel so blessed to have gone, to have seen what I saw, experienced what I experienced. And even there were some difficult parts of it. I um, don't do real well with climbing hills. And, and so there were some difficult parts. It was, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go to this area of Italy if you have any medical problems. I found that out because it's, it's quite rigorous to get around. But it's exciting, though. I'm glad I didn't miss it. They don't tell you, though, you know, if you have this, that, or the other thing, don't go on this trip. <laughs> they don't give you any warning. You're just, you just go, and you're in for it, you know. So, but that's okay. That's the way those things go. Tough it out. That's what you have to do. Just tough it out. All right. Now, I, I, I believe I have some pretty good foundation here for my cliffs and rocks. 
boulders. All right. And if you notice, everything is coming down in a downward movement. So I'm painting with, um, you know, I'm trying to describe the movement of the ob object with my brush by putting my uh, paint on in a downward stroke, you know, so that this doesn't take really a whole lot of, of painting to read correctly. I'll come back in and put some highlights on it and everything, but I want to get to that water. First of all, though, I've got these little outcroppings here that I have to do. Okay, so here, is, here we are right here, and this is out here showing. Okay, and then there's something that's coming right here and around. And it goes across here like so. And then that comes up and that goes in. There's a little bit of water in there. That's going like that and up. And then down and around. Okay, now so we'll get some paint on this guy. No, I think we're getting it pretty good here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now do you have the feeling that you are high and looking down? I hope so because that's that's what that's how you're supposed to feel, like you're up above looking down. And I think you'll get that feeling a little better when I get some of that water on there. All right, now I'm going to trade brushes. Let me get a little larger brush here. Mix up some blue. If you notice on my photograph, the blue is very like a cobalt blue up here very blue, almost has a little violet to it. And then as it comes down here, it turns into more of a greenish blue. And then as it gets down here, it gets where the, all the turbulence is. It gets a very beautiful light blue-green. And some of the water, some of the white in the water where it's coming up and foaming, it has a little bit of violet underneath it. I don't know if you can see this, but it's it's really it's really very interesting when you look at this and you see all of the colors that are in there. And that's what I want to capture is all of that color and motion, movement, excitement, tremendous force, tremendous energy. That's what I want to capture for you. So I'm going to start with the top and mix it. I'm mixing up um, to, uh, a blue, a very dark blue, and a bluish green. When I mix the two together, they make cobalt blue. Okay. Now I don't want, I, I can't paint straight out of the tube because it would be garish. So I have to gray the blue with a little bit of its complement of which is orange. The complement of blue is orange. So in order to gray my paint, I have to add a little bit of the complement. If I just went pure color, you'd think, oh goodness, Kitty, that looks like something out of a, out of a comic book. Okay, now I'm adding a little bit of white to it, and I see that was maybe a bit too much. It's a little overzealous here in my 
hurry to get at this water. So now I'll have to darken it down a little bit. I'll show you here what I'm doing. You see, I'm mixing this, this, with a little bit of the orange. And I'll put my knife now to check. I'll put my knife up here. I've got a little bit of glare here in the studio, so it's kind of hard for me to tell. But I believe that I need to needs to be grayed just a little bit more. I don't know if you noticed or not, but I my canvas is undertoned in red. I do that with all of my canvases. It's just a, a red acrylic and water, lots of water. And I tone the canvases because it's a lot less intimidating to work on a canvas that's already been like messed up. It's not pristine and white. And not only that, but the most important part about it is that by doing so, I have this reddish glow, this warm reddish glow that will come up through my paint and it'll warm up my paint on the canvas. I know this is taking me a little while, but I, I, want, I want it to be right for you. And so I'm adding just a little tiny bit of violet. There we go. Okay, now I'm liking that. I think that looks pretty good. And then we'll have to make up a lot of other colors to go on from there. But I think this is a good base. So we'll start with this from the top. Now when I paint water, typically, I like to go in a downward motion. And in doing so, I'm showing the depth of the water. This all across here is very dark. And bear with me because I know this probably isn't the most interesting part. You know, sometimes you have to build the basement, which can be kind of boring, before you can build your house. And then after you build your house, then you get to pick out the paint colors for the roof and the shingles and, and everything. So this is kind of like that. I'm building my basement right now. I'm putting the, the base, base in for what I'm going to be doing later. That's where the magic comes in. I'm going to take a little bit of white, lighten that up a little bit. And I'm going to start coming down with a little bit of light. You see these little tiny short strokes here, okay? Now just so you know where I'm going, I'm going to take another brush, a clean brush, and I'm going to make a movement like water. I hope you can see that. I hope that's showing up for you that we have movement in this water. And because I'm not, I painted in a downward motion of which gave me my depth. Now, when I go across and just barely make the wave motions, now it looks like water on top of deep water. It's like surface. Okay. 
Okay. All right, now we'll go on with the next part. And now we need to get a little bit, um, put a little tiny bit of green in here. Oh, that's really pretty. I like that. Hmm. Now we're going to come, can you see? Can you see that gradual, very gentle color change there? That's what I want. This is such a fun journey. I love to paint water. I'm so glad that you could join me today. I hope you've watched the other episodes of Painting Journeys. So far, I think we've been to two places in Alaska and several places in Italy. So we're getting around there. I've been wondering where we should go next. As I'm talking to you, I'm thinking, where should we go next? Should we stay in Italy for a while? There's so much more to show you about Italy. I don't really want to leave the country until I've shown you everything I want to show you that's there. So maybe we'll stay in Italy. Maybe, maybe next, the next show we'll do a, um, let me see here. Oh, I know where I want to take you. I want to take you to Assisi, where the Saint Francis of Assisi is from. They have a beautiful church there. And that's where I'm going to take you next time. We're going to go to Assisi. There again, it's kind of mountainous. You know, the city sort of sits on a hillside. But there are areas that are, that are kind of um, flat, like little plateaus. I met the most wonderful monk while I was there. And he was just so humble and, and nice and talked to me. It's kind of, kind of a funny story, but I don't want to tell you too much about that because we're not there yet. So we want to stay where we're at. And right now we're painting the Italian Riviera on the, right on the Mediterranean at its wildest. There we go. And then we'll come down with this. Now these, these mountains are in front. Even though I'm trying to go behind right now, I'm trying to be very careful because those mountains are in front. And you see how this is a little lighter over here? That's because I have all that foam to put on there. So it's lighter underneath, okay? I do see right in here, though, that I do need some of that dark back in there. In fact, it's quite dark. I'm gonna come up here and put some very dark in there. Okay, and then this is coming around here. And then we have this dark, it's in there, and it's coming around here and around in here. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna take that, some white, and I'm gonna put in here. And along over in here. Wipe my brush really good, and now we'll make water again.
excuse me for ta not talking, it takes a little bit of, of uh, concentration. Uh, I'm thinking really hard now because I am praying that you're seeing the same thing I'm seeing. There we go. One of the things that I did not enjoy about my trip to Italy was there were so many places, you know, where you had to pay to use the restroom. And so you would pay to go in and use the restroom and there wouldn't be a toilet seat, you know? And I always thought, that is really strange. Why would a person have to pay to use the restroom and there's no toilet seat on the toilet? It was just, I don't know if they'd all been ripped off or, or what, but I found that very odd and uncomfortable. But those are the little things that that um, I guess that was really a little too much information, but still it was what I thought about because it's, it's, you know, it's different. It's like, it's not what you expect, you know? Alrighty. Now we're coming down and we're getting greener. So we're going to go into the green a little bit more. And I'm mixing up that green, put a little white in it. Okay, here. Alrighty, now we're coming down into this. And I hope you can see that subtle change in color. And there's some places that are quite green and some places that are still a little blue. This, you know, this, this water is all moving together, roaring in and out. And so you have to, um, I, I feel anyway, that the best way to, to paint this is to put the color that you see where you see it and then go back and make it look like the water. And, okay. Now we need to be even a little greener as we're coming down in here. Now that's lighter there. It's quite a bit lighter in here. Now no, remember, I'm going to make all of that um, the wave action and the turmoil, I'll have to do that off camera. I'm sorry, but time just does not allow us to do everything on this painting. So I'll take it um, and um, set it up in my studio at... Um, home and I'll finish it and then our next show I'll have it all ready to show you all framed and and all finished with all the foam and everything maybe there'll be time to show you a little foam today but I don't know though we got to get this canvas covered here okay let's see 
I'm still doing that. I'm still building my basement, basically. Well, I guess I'm almost done with the basement and I've started on the house. Or you could equate that to baking a cake, okay? The cake is in the oven and I'm thinking about what am I going to frost it with. There we go. There we go. And that brown is kind of going into my water and making it a little muddy. But that's okay. That's all right because the water does, the rocks do go out into the water and the water does go over them. So that's okay. I do love this little, this little spot right in here. Yeah, where the water came in there. I love that little spot. All right, now we'll take the other brush and we'll try to make this look like water. It's pretty much the same stroke over and over again. Um, to get it to look the way you want. You can't really um, make the waves just yet, but you suggest them. You know, you can suggest them by putting a little dark underneath it and a little dark under there. You see all the colors in that water? It all shows. There. Now we're getting down into the green. Okay, it's, it's working, I think. Put a little light in here. I like to paint with thick paint and pasta. I love thick paint. I like that feeling that of, of immediacy. I don't like an overworked look to my paintings. Just starting to get a little action in here. There we go. Maybe it's a little bit of darker in here. Okay, and now I think it's time to start getting into the really light green in the water. That really pretty stuff. I see water with this color in it, and I don't know, it just does something to me. Just, I just think that's so gorgeous. This is more white over here. Oops, I'm using the wrong brush. Okay, let's get back to this big brush. And here it's more whiter. down and around and this is really got the action here it's really going up like this and so I don't want to do too much of my 
uh, this business here because that's for more far away. Down in here, it's got to be there's got to be much more turmoil and and um, movement going in different directions. I can't do too much though until I get the underpainting on there. Mm, pretty, pretty, pretty color. I hope you can see how that just goes from the deep blue far off right on down. Usually I don't do paintings where there's no sky in them. I don't know. It just doesn't quite seem, you know, like it's going to gel to me. But then when I saw this, I loved it. Just no sky, just water and rock. This is all going every which way here. White, white, everything is just swirling around. The pale green. Got to make this strong. And there's lots of white down here, but that white, the white has to come on after. Okay, so before. All right, now we're almost have it covered. I want to hurry. I want to. I want to show you a little bit of the action of the waves down here. That water pounding and the roar of it. It just was so loud. Okay, now let's see if I can, I know we're getting pretty close to our, our time being up, but let's see if I can just take and add a little bit of the, the violet and the water in, in the white caps of the waves and just get that movement going up there. A lot of times I'll stand back when I do the waves like that and I'll just flick the paint at the wave to make it the spray. Feel that spray in the water. Okay, now there's a lot of dark and light down in here and I realize that but it's not something that we can hurry. I hope you understand that. It's just, we can't hurry that. That's something that's gonna take some time and we'll have to just, now that we have it covered and you can kind of see what it, where it's going, I hope you can anyway. Yeah, okay. All oh, that different. Now, so we have this green is right in here and it's coming like this. This is darker. And then this kind of softens into that. And 
this is like on the top of it. And over in here, we have this big And just, just for the sake, I might scrape this off afterwards, but just for the sake of showing you a little bit of what this is going to look like, I'm just going to just very quickly show you, give you a, to give you an idea of what, what this is going to look like with all of the water and everything on it, all of the wave action going to do this very quickly and it's I know it's not going to this is not how it's going to be when it's finished but it'll give you an idea a little bit of where we're going you see how that's swishing up yeah that's it and then this down here is quite light so I'm just going to just make that all like it's just Okay, and then we have some wave coming over here, and I'm going to just take that and make that coming over there. Very thick paint now, rushing, rushing to feel the water. There. There. Need some dark in here. There. Oh. This is so much fun. It is. Like I said, this is probably when I bring it back and show you the next show, it probably won't look exactly like this, but at least you have an idea of what those waves will look like up there and how that's going to be with that water curving around and doing all its wonderful movements in the in the um, and then up in here we have more wet white waves white calves and that's all coming off of there okay there's even a little bit up here yeah yeah let's see you don't want to leave anything out there okay Oh, I'm just about out of paint, so that must mean the show is almost over. There we go. A little bit of white in there. A little bit of white in here. Okay, now. You see how that's just rolling around? It's, it's deep and scary. Okay. There. And see if I can get any more left here on here. We have just a little bit of time left. But look at that. Look at how that water's just splashing over. Splashing up. Look at that. I hope this is as exciting looking to you as it is to me. I hope you've enjoyed being with me today as we've taken our little journey down the Italian Riviera, the coastline of the Mediterranean. There we go. Now maybe I'll leave the water alone and I'll take this brush here and in these last few seconds here, I'll try to give these mountains just a little more definition for you so that you can see how the outcroppings come a little bit more. Okay, this is coming out like this. This is really dark down here. This is dark down here. And we'll echo 
sprinkle a little bit of our watercolor onto the rocks right in this area here and here. Okay. There. Cover up that canvas right there a little bit. Okay. All righty. And right here. Okay. There we go. I have it all blocked in. And I, I'm happy with it. I think it is a good start. I am going to, like I said, I'll finish it. In our next show, I'll show it to you all completely finished. There'll be a lot more detail in the water. Um, I'm really glad you could join me today. This has been a really a nice, nice journey. And I'm so glad that you could make it with me. I feel so blessed to be able to be here with you, taking this journey across the canvas to all these other places that I have been. And thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, this is Kitty Lynn Klish. The name of the show is Painting Journeys. And on the next show, we're going to visit the town of Assisi, where St. Francis of Assisi came from. And I think you're going to really like that. I'm going to do a building in that, in that show. I think you'll like that. So... I have to say bye-bye for now. It's really been great. Thank you for joining.